This is a lightsaber chassis from Savvy's Workshop where you can build your own custom lightsaber. You're given this chassis and a selection of different metal pieces to put on it to make it look however you want it to look. Um, this one isn't quite working right now. Um, there is a ribbon cable that connects the bottom half and the top half. And when this was first taken apart, it wasn't clear where to tuck uh, the ribbon cable in because there's an extra slack to it, you know, to help so you can pull it apart and work on it and put it back together. Where to tuck in that extra slack? The secret answer is the extra slack on the cable should be tucked into the bottom half. Well, if you don't know that and you try tucking it into the top half, uh, you wind up damaging the ribbon cable to the point that uh, at least one of the pins has a uh, has a problem with it, has a, it is broken. And if you shake it just the right way or slam it or whatever, occasionally that pin will make connection and the, the, the wire and the ribbon cable will, will, will two broken halves will, will connect and it'll work for a little bit, but then it won't work anymore after you, you breathe on it. So I've ordered a replacement for the cable. Uh, until that cable arrives though, what am I to do? Yeah, let me just demonstrate that this doesn't work because that's very exciting. So there you go, crystal is in, the, the crystal is in the, uh, the lightsaber there and it is not doing anything. It should be doing something. But you can see that the other pins in the ribbon cable work, just not the one that tells it that the switch has been pressed and it's time to start checking to see if there's a, a crystal there because if I plug in the blade, you can, you can hear it making noises that it knows that a blade has been inserted. Anyways, so this is going to have to wait until that cable arrives in a week or so. So what can I do until then with my perfectly functional lightsaber blade? Well, what you can do is make one of these. This is a DigiSpark Pro. It's a little Arduino that you can microcontroller here, an AT Tiny microcontroller that you can program. And uh, this is a little PCB that I put together real quick. I have some pogo pins, some spring-mounted pins here on it that just happen to line up perfectly with the contact pads on the base of the uh, lightsaber blade. So were I to connect this like so, and what's the right way to hold this? If I line this up so the arrow right here points to the data pin here and if I bring in a USB cable actually I should do the USB cable first I am clearly not prepared there we go data pin the right way like that and apply power I built into the code here a small delay, so it's going to wait a few seconds before it turns on. There we go, the lightsaber blade is on, and I am controlling it through code on the Arduino. And this code is just as a little demonstration. It cycles through all the colors, turning it on, flashing it, turning it off. So how does it work? That is what I want to show you. Here's a little diagram of the base of the lightsaber blade. You have a data pin, a ground pin, and a power pin. Power and ground are coming from the battery pack. Uh, that's supplying about four and a half volts. Five volts will work too, it's close enough. And we have a data pin. So if we can find a way to connect these three uh, pins or, or contact pads to the Arduino, say with this little adapter here, or even just taking a wire and, you know, stripping the end of it and scrunching up all the the wire and then taping it down, forcing it in contact with these pins and then taping, putting tape over it to hold it in place. That'll work too. That's how I started uh, working on this. Uh, but if we can find a way to connect all of these to an Arduino, we can start sending it commands. So what do the commands look like? Well, that's a great question. Here we go. Here is slide one of 212 that we will now review. 
So this is a graph of what the signal on the data pin looks like. Uh, it's a digital pin, which means that it's going to alternate between uh, two values, a high and a low. High value uh, is two and a half volts. You could go higher. I have used five volts. Um, the, the, the lightsaber hilt is using two and a half volts. That's probably what you should do. And you should probably figure out how to do that. But if not, if you're lazy, uh, you can just run a resistor from your data pin uh, to the uh, Arduino, uh, to the, the, the digital pin on your Arduino. And I'm using, I think, a 4.7K resistor. That's just to limit the current so this doesn't send a ton of current into the microcontroller in the blade and burn it out. Um, it works for me, but if you try that, you are you are on your own. You are taking a risk. I am taking a risk, but it's worked so far. The signal is being sent from the hilt to the blade. And the first thing it begins with is a, a sort of a, a signal to get the attention of the blade, to say, hey, a command is coming, wake up. And all that is is that when it's normally idle, when nothing's going on, the data pin is high. And then it sets it low for 17 milliseconds, then it sets the high for 17 milliseconds, and then it sets it low again for 17 milliseconds. After that, it's going to be a command of 8 bits, and or 1 byte, and that is the command that is all it is. This little thing, which I'm going to call a preamble, and then the actual command itself, which will be 8 bits. Each bit is uh, can be interpreted as the ratio between the time that the signal is high to the time that the signal is low. So if you do time high over time low, if it's over uh, zero, meaning that if it's high more than it's low, call that a zero. If it's low more often than it's high, that is if, if the time that it's high is smaller uh, than the time that it's low, that will be a one. And based on this, you can now string eight, eight of these together and get yourself your eight bits that make up the command. So, and each bit should be about 3,600 microseconds long or 3.6 milliseconds long, which means that uh, when you, if you're writing code the way I do it, think about it as uh, for when the time high or the time low, if it needs to be short, make it about 33% of that. So let's call that... Uh, 1200 milliseconds for the short length and 2400 milliseconds for the long length. So a, a zero would be when it's the high time equals, uh, the high time has to be, we're going to do a zero, right? High has to be longer, so 2400 microseconds. And the low time would be 1200 microseconds. And these don't have to be exact. I've gone down to, I think, 1,500 and 1,000 or something like that microseconds, and it still worked. Uh, but there is a limit. It will eventually not... It'll be... You'll, you're switching too fast, and the, the blade won't be able to detect the commands anymore. So your preamble, followed by 8 bits. 8 bits... E each bit takes on the form of a, a high period and a low period, and the timing of the high period compared to the timing of the low period tells you what bit it is, a 1 or a 0. Slide 2 of 240. So again, a reminder, here is your 0. It's longer high than it is low. It's high for more time than it is low. Over here, it's high for a shorter period of time than it is low. That's a 1, that's a 0. Here's an example of the signal. It's crudely drawn. I apologize. Here is your preamble, your low, high, low of 17 milliseconds each. All right. And then you have your eight bits. You have a period of high followed by a period of low. That is one bit. We can see here, hopefully, you can't really. It's awful. I uh, should have used a ruler at the very least. But you can see it's supposed to be high longer than it is low. High longer than it is low. That's a zero, so we interpret that as a zero. The next bit, it is high for a, a less amount of time than it is low. 
high for a less or shorter amount of time than it is low, interpret that as a 1. And you go down the lines here, and you get 8 bits that translate into a command here, which I've been marking up and changing. Um, the 8 bits, you can break it down into 4 bits per half, right? The first 4 bits is the command. The command is turn on, turn off, flash, um, and that's about it, really. There are other commands, but nothing important. Those are the big ones. And then the second four bits are the color. So turn on as a red, or turn on blue, turn on green, turn on yellow, whatever. So now if we interpret the... Again, if we take these numbers here and bring them down... Uh, I should do it up here, right? So we have 0, 1, 0, 0, right? So 0, 1, 0, 0. That's your command. And then 0, 1, 0, 0. 0, 1, 0, 0. That's your color. And if I look up in my notes here, I actually have it over here, right? So a command of 4, because th these values are uh, in binary. So if this is a 4, and this is a 4, the command 4 is to turn it off and the color 4 would turn it green. However, in my awful example here that I didn't realize I had made an awful example clearly until I got down to here, turn off the color 4. It doesn't matter the color. You can put any value here. It's just going to turn the lightsaber off. Now, if the command, say, was instead of 0, 1, 0, 0, if it was 0, 0, 1, 0, then it becomes a 2 which is the command to turn on, which I have fixed down here. So 2, 4, this is a hexadecimal notation over here on the right, the value 2 for the first four bits and the value 4 for the second four bits, for the next four bits, turn on the color green, and that'll tell the lightsaber to turn on green. If you want to change the color, uh, you have red, orange, er, red, no, no orange, sorry, you have red, yellow, green, blue, purple, white, uh, and that's it. There is a dim purple color, but I don't know that that's intentional. I think that might be just a an oddity with the, uh, the construction of the code in the blade hilt. In the blade base, the microcontroller in the blade. Anyways, um... All the different commands, all the different colors, I'm going to include them in a copy of the Arduino code that I have running on this. I will include a link to it in the description below, so you can look at it and play around and do whatever you want. That is all it takes to then take a lightsaber blade, and this silly thing here, and where did I put that USB cable, I have a nasty habit of just throwing these things away when I don't need them. Not in the trash, I mean just chuck them off to the side. Plug it in with power. I should make sure I know what side the data pin is on. Don't be me, because if you get it wrong, you will fry your blade. I'm sure 5 volts with no current limiting to the data pin will absolutely destroy it. So there we go, it's turned on, it's hooked up, and in a few seconds here, based off of the signals on slide number 2 of 240, you can do this. Cool. Uh, the video's already long enough, we can skip the other 237 slides, okay?